The AI startup Grok has achieved insane speeds when paired with the new Llama 3 model out of Meta. Today on the podcast, we're breaking down why this is important, just how fast this is, benchmarking this, comparing this to ChatGPT4, and saying why I think this may be a huge competitor and maybe a huge, you know, thorn in NVIDIA's side. Some people are predicting that all startups are going to be using this by the end of the year. And this is going to be massive because of the way NVIDIA is essentially running their GPUs and, and their chips, their H100s for training AI models. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is that this is all kind of going viral because of a recent tweet that was put out by Matt Schumer, who is the CEO of HyperWrite AI and also Other Side AI. So, you know, a big player in the AI space. And he said, my mind is blown. Grok is serving Llama 3 at over 800 tokens per second. 800 tokens per second. This unlocks so many incredible use cases. It's one thing to see my demo. It's another thing entirely to experience it for yourself. Do yourself a favor, try ASAP. He has a link to a video showing how it works, but also says, you know, like, go actually try this tool yourself. So, of course, what could I do? But I went and decided to give this a fair shake for all of you. What I actually went and originally tried on the, the Llama 3 model was I, you know, I asked it what causes a meteor shower. And if you ask it that using the Llama 3 8B model, so that's 8 billion parameters, it pumped out like an entire thing with bullet points and with numbered notes explaining exactly what causes the meteor shower. It was able to do this whole thing in 766 tokens per second. So like blistering fast, almost when you type it, it boom appears. Now, what I actually want to caveat this by saying is there's a bunch of different open source models out there to test and I, I wanted to give them all a fair shake but the first thing I want to say is that this is a Llama 3, of course, a new Llama model, but this is the 70B model. So, I mean, you could say this is a little deceiving because if you try this on the 70B, meaning 70 billion parameters, um, it actually only is able to do this in like 300 tokens per second. So not quite 800. 800 is super, super fast. But if you want to compare that to something like Mistral, for example, who is, of course, the other main competitor in the open source space, it's able to do 570 tokens per second, which is very, very quick. And then of course, the Gemma model, which is by Google, again, this is Gemma 7, 7B, so only 7 billion parameters, it was able to pump that out in, you know, 400 tokens per second. So pretty quick there. The last model, I know you guys are probably sick of the benchmarks. The last one I want to talk about is the Llama 2 70B, and that's at 300 tokens per second. So it's interesting, I think for the Llama models, as we're getting like newer Llama models, right? Essentially the Llama 2 70B versus the Llama 3 70B, we're able to, you know, get roughly the same speeds actually. So it's not like the model got that much faster, but when you drop this down to just 7 billion, you know, tokens or 7 billion parameters, uh, it, it's going a lot faster. So all this to say, this is incredible. Now, some people are like, oh, this model, that model is faster. What the real question I think is, is how long does it take to generate on chat GPT? If you ask, you know, what caused a meter shower on GPT, specifically GPT-4, how long is this going to take? I went and tried it. It's It feels kind of like the speed of someone slowly typing out a paragraph. This is not quick in any way, shape, or form. It definitely takes a minute and it gives you a much shorter paragraph. Now, all the benchmarking aside, let's get into how this actually works and what is actually being achieved here. So the first thing that I wanted to say is, of course, these are incredibly fast AI models. So right now, if you're getting something like 800 tokens per second, that's around 48,000 tokens per minute, which is pretty much fast enough to generate about 500 words of text per second, which is obviously, you know, orders of magnitude faster than the typical LLM that you're going to see that's trained with a GPU from the cloud today, something like ChatGPT. Why is this different? So this is currently being done in a different way completely. When you start looking at something like that, right now, Grok's architecture, if you if you go, there's an article, a great article by VentureBeat that covered this, and this is what they said. They said, quote, Grok's architecture is a significant departure from the designs used by NVIDIA and other established chip makers. Instead of adapting general purpose processors for AI, Grok has built what it's called, it's called a tensor streaming processor, but they built this to accelerate the specific computational patterns of deep learning. This clean sheet approach allows the company to strip out extraneous 
circuitry and optimize the data flow for highly repetitive paralyzable workloads of AI inference. The result, Grok asserts, is a dramatic reduction in the latency, power consumption, and cost of running large neural networks compared to mainstream alternatives. Three things here that I think are insane. They say this is a dramatic reduction in latency, power consumption, and also cost of running. So these things are getting cheaper, faster, and using a lot less energy. This is exactly what we are looking through as we're trying to make one of these big AI breakthroughs. This thing is much faster. So what is the result in the in the field, right? Like obviously this means that the AI models are gonna get a lot faster, they're gonna get a lot cheaper, they're gonna use less energy, sure. Who's the winner and loser in the AI space? Of course, the users are the winner. Like I'm thrilled to get faster results. And also as a, you know, as a, a software owner that's creating software in this space, I'm thrilled that for example, something like Self Pause, the number one AI life coach that I created, it's gonna be able to give people a chatting responses faster. The life coach is gonna be able to respond to people faster. So that's exciting to me. The end user, the business owner, that's great. But like the big players, who is affected? And the big answer here is NVIDIA. So something a lot of people have been pointing out. And specifically, there's a quote from VentureBeat again, where they say, NVIDIA currently dominates the market for AI processors with its A100, H100 GPUs powering the vast majority of cloud AI services. But a crop of well-funded startups, so they specifically name Grok, Cerebras, Sambra Nova, Graphcore, those, those four companies primarily, are all challenging that dominance with new architectural purposes built for AI. Of these challengers, Grok has been one of the most vocal about targeting inference as well as training. CEO Jonathan Ross has boldly predicted that most AI startups will be using Grok's low precision tensor streaming processors for inference by the end of 2024. This is a very bold prediction, a bold claim. I mean, it's left to be said if this is actually going to happen, but this is a major challenger to NVIDIA, right? They're building these A100s, H100s to be able to do a lot. Grok and these other competitors are building this new architecture specifically designed for what AI model needs, which is very repetitive. Uh, it's streamlined. And so it's gonna be a huge game changer. I think for NVIDIA, this is gonna be a major competitor. And these are some very bold predictions. Now, what are people actually saying about this? If you go over to X, of course, there's memes where people are shocked when they're seeing this. People are saying Grok is so OP, it's ridiculous, had been trying it with Mistral, but super excited to try Llama 3. So it is faster with Llama 3. I mean, if you use the 7B version, so that is impressive. Someone else said, this is indeed a game changer. Imagine incredible fast whisper plus Llama 3 on Grok converting spoken text into JSON instead of typing data into a form. Unseen productivity gains unlocked, add a price tag and sell this to B2B. Something else I like, someone said, OpenAI needs to do something about their inference speeds for GPT-4. Otherwise, this will be their downfall from the developer community. Needs to match Grok in terms of speed because this unlocks more things you can do with AI models in your applications. I 100% agree. Testing GPT-4 on the same question, you know, the, the Meteor one I was doing, Grok was beating with, with Llama 3 7B chat GPT. Now, to be fair, this is GPT-4, not GPT-3.5. So there's that. But... It, I think it goes to show that the Grok is able to, to process these things faster, but I think a fair benchmark would need to have GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 running directly on Grok. Someone said, this is mind blowing. Just tried it with this prompt. Please provide me 20, 20 lesser known or even better, quite obscure, but still incredibly thought provoking thoughts about the creative process. Took a millisecond faster than I could mentally process. This is so, so fast. Someone else said, near real-time inference is the next natural evolutionary step for LLMs, will be a game changer. Also, why compute has been referred to as the new oil. Someone said, 800 tokens per second, that's 20 times faster than my typing speed and four times faster than the best human typer in the world. With speeds like that, we'll be able to unlock exciting new use cases. People are saying that this is gonna be incredible as we start using this with code interpreter. Um, people are saying that this is, of course, super speedy, but they're, some of them are like, well, I can't figure out why you'd want it to be at this speed. I'll tell you why you want it at this speed. With a lot of these applications that are being built today, for example, there's one that's like Air AI, which is essentially allowing you to be a sales rep that talks on the phone to people. Um, they have a great demo. They have 70,000 businesses that are trying to use this right now or that are using this. And the reason why you need this super fast inference is because 
you don't want any latency. If you have a tool like this that's talking on the phone, you don't want it to be like someone asks a question and then it's like loads for a second while it figures it out and then it spits back. You want like immediate response, like a normal conversation. So I think that this is gonna be incredibly powerful as we start getting more and more of these tools, as these tools get faster, cheaper. And of course, I think something people talk about a lot is like speed, yeah, that's great. But another thing that Grok is really bringing to the table isn't just speed, it's also the cost reduction and then it's also the energy consumption. So data centers are notorious for being massive energy hogs. And as we start getting some of these tools that use less energy, cutting costs, using less energy, better for the grid. This is gonna be phenomenal all around, so I'm really excited to see where this goes, and I will definitely keep you up to date. Make sure that if you enjoyed this episode, you subscribe or follow us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, like, comment, give us some reviews. We really appreciate it, and I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day.